our commissioner, Kevin McKinnon. Over to you, Commissioner. Well, good morning and thank you, Alicia, and thanks to all of you for being uh, with us today. Uh, just a quick look at uh, high level employment stats. Um, Minnesota's unemployment rate inched down two tenths of, tenths of a percent to 2.8 percent in March uh, 2023 from February. Uh, our labor force participation rate stayed the same over the month at 68 percent. The labor force size increased by 770 people over the month, uh, and the number of employed people in Minnesota increased by 4,219 workers, and the number of unemployed decreased by 3,449 workers. Nationally, the U.S. unemployment rate ticked down one-tenth of a percent uh, percentage point to 3.5%. And the U.S. labor force participation rate ticked up one tenth of a percent to 62.6%. Uh, uh, obviously, Minnesota uh, remains well below on the unemployment uh, rate and uh, well above on the labor force participation rate. Now to uh, jobs. Uh, Minnesota lost 5,700 jobs, down 0.2% from February to March on a seasonally adjusted basis. The private sector lost 6,100 jobs, down 0.2%. Government jobs grew by 400 in Minnesota over the month, offsetting some of the losses in the private sector. Nationally, the U.S. gained uh, 236,000 jobs, up 0.2% from February to March, uh, when the U.S. private sector gained 189,000 jobs, up 0.1%. There are some mixed messages in those numbers. You might be asking how the uh, how can the unemployment rate and the jobs numbers be down? Uh, it's because there are two different surveys gathering the data estimates here, one for the employment numbers and another for jobs numbers. And this month, uh, there's a mismatch uh, in the numbers. Angelina will have uh, a bit more on that and, of course, more detail on the monthly uh, data. So I will uh, now turn it over to our labor uh, Market Information Director, Angelina Wynn. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. So I'm going to dive right into the details here. Um, five super sectors in Minnesota lost jobs on a seasonally adjusted basis uh, over the month, and they are construction, um, lost 1,900 jobs. Manufacturing uh, is down 1,300 jobs. Trade, transportation, and utilities is down 2,300 jobs. Professional business and, and business services lost 1,200 jobs, and other services lost 700 jobs. Um, three super sectors did not change over the month, and they are mining and logging information and financial activities. And three super sectors saw small positive growth. Um, educational and health services gained 600 jobs. Leisure and hospitality gained 700 jobs, and government gained 400 jobs. So overall, we see a little dip in the blue and green lines for March for jobs numbers. Um, and the unemployment rate is still very low um, at 2.8% for this month. Next slide, please. Based on 12 month moving averages in March, all race groups saw, saw an improvement in the unemployment rate, both over the month and over the year. Um, Hispanic Minnesotans, the the uh, dark blue line had the highest unemployment rates at 4.3%. Over the month, um, this group saw a 0.5 percentage point improvement, and over the year, they saw a 0.8 uh, percentage point improvement. Black Minnesotans uh, had the largest decrease in unemployment rate over the month, uh, almost one full percentage point decrease. And over the year, it is a 4.6 point um, decrease, which is great. Uh, white Minnesotans unemployment rate did not change over the month, and it still remains the lowest um, at 2.4%. Next slide, please. Looking at 12 month moving average uh, for labor force participation rates by race, Hispanic Minnesotans continue to have the highest rates at 76.1%, even though this group saw the sharpest drop over the year um, by 3.6 percentage points. Uh, Black Minnesotans rates saw the highest growth both over the month uh, and over the year, so, and landing at 70.8% for March. Um, labor force participation rate for white Minnesotans has been steadily declining, and it's now down to a serious low of 67.1%, um, and this is dating back to since January to 2002. Um, it decreased by 
0.1 percentage point over the month, and it has dropped uh, 1.4 percentage points over the year. Next slide, please. Now we look at uh, over the year job growth by super sector. Um, Minnesota gained a little more than 64,000 payroll jobs, uh, which is a 2.2% growth over the year. The private sector gained a little more than 55,000 jobs over the year, uh, which is a 2.3 percentage increase. Uh, U.S. employment grew a little bit faster than us, 2.7% um, over the year, and uh, the U.S. private sector grew 2.8% over the year. Um, all super sectors posted positive annual growth in Minnesota, except for mining and logging. Um, they lost 102 jobs over the year, um, but a few noteworthy changes I want to point out. Um, construction gained more than 1,600 jobs over the year, which is a 1.4% growth rate. Uh, information saw positive growth of almost 1,500 jobs or a 3.3% um, rate, which is a faster growth rate than the national rate of 2.1%. Education and health services continue to be the second highest um, over the year growth uh, super sector, up uh, almost 15,000 jobs, which is a 2.7% um, growth, and it's mostly driven by growth in healthcare and social assistance. Leisure and hospitality continue strong recovery, um, and they it is still the largest uh, growth of all super sectors, up uh, more than 19,000 jobs over the year, and again outpaced the national rate, 8.2% um, growth rate in Minnesota versus 6.5% growth rate uh, nationally. And this growth is driven uh, by accommodation and food services. Next slide, please. So the good news this month is uh, wage growth is uh, coming closer to keeping up with the inflation rate. Average hourly wages for all private sector workers fell 15 cents um, over the month, but over the year it jumped um, by a dollar and 52 cents, which is 4.5% growth over the year. That's compared to 5% inflation. And then since March of 2020, over three years, it, it has grown 11.4%. Um, compared to inflation of 16.9% over three years. Nationally, private sector wages increased 4.2% or sorry, 4.4% uh, over the year and 14.6% uh, over three years. Um, so we here we show some key um, subsectors in Minnesota and many of them um, over the year wage growth has uh, been higher than uh, the inflation rate. And that is it for this month. Back to you, Alicia. You always have to unmute. You know, at this point in the pandemic, I do recommend remembering to unmute yourself. We are very happy to take any questions you might have right now, either for the commissioner or for Angelina. Any questions today? Kavita, over to you, please. Good morning. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, yes. good morning, guys. Um, yeah, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the job loss of 5,700 jobs. Um, you know, what do you think was happening? Are you seeing other signs of retrenchment or higher layoffs or anything in the, um, in you know, uh, in what you guys are seeing? Or uh, do you think it's a, you know, statistical issue or um, maybe a weather issue, just kind of curious to hear some uh, of your thoughts about why we may have, we lost jobs last month. Yeah, so um, it's important to remember that this, these are estimates and they will be revised. Um, and so a 0.2% change month over month is uh, normal and, and natural. And we expect the data to fluctuate in the short term like that. Um, so over, the job loss were mostly in the in the big uh, super sectors like construction, manufacturing, um, trade, transportation, and utilities. And these are seasonally adjusted numbers. So to some degree, we are accounting for seasonality. Um, but weather played a, a big role. Um, we had a, a snowy winter this year, um, and it could have impacted, you know, um, how construction and manufacturing and uh, trade transportation utilities um, operated. So I, I don't see any, um, this is not an indicator, 
indication of anything uh, bad economically. Our unemployment rate is still very low. Um, pe more people are moving from unemployment to employment. Um, so this is just a natural fluctuation of the data. And can I just add, um, do you know, I know there's been a lot of revisions to the numbers, so it's a little bit hard to um, easily see, but do you know when the last month was that we reported a job loss? Um, I'm going to ask Cameron if you can look that up for me. And we uh, will get back to you, Kavita. Are there any other questions? I'm happy to take just a little bit, a little more, more time here. Uh, I'll ask another one if nobody else has anything. Um, do you, uh, I was also curious, were, was last month's jobs numbers revised or was that, is that the 14, uh, or no, 10,100 or 10,100? Was that still stand or was that revised up or down? Uh, last month was uh, for February, it was revised down a little bit. So the change, um, it was a 1400 uh, difference downward. So we had originally um, reported um, 2 million 983 thousand jobs. It's now revised to 2 million um, 981 um, thousand jobs. So a little a, a difference of 1,400 jobs, um, which is the about 0.05% difference, but very tiny. And are you guys seeing anything with like layoff, uh, jobless claims that, you know, make that indicate that, you know, there is potentially, um, you know, some trouble brewing in the label market, or are you seeing it still being pretty, pretty low levels? Kavita, this is Kevin. Um, generally, um, as compared to both pre-pandemic and during a pandemic, um, this time of year, uh, it's relatively stable from what we uh, might have seen uh, in, in previous years. Of course, um, there's been some announcements of potential um, uh, layoffs uh, that you've uh, probably heard about. Um, uh, and some others that actually were moving from one location to another, um, uh, but uh, nothing uh, generally out of the order uh, from what we would see pre-pandemic or during the pandemic. Great. Thank you, Commissioner. Are there any other questions that we can try to answer today? And Kavita, to get back to your uh, first question about the last time we saw a month-over-month uh, -month job loss, it was from November to December of 2022, um, and that's with revised numbers. Great. Thank you. I'll open it up one last time for any final questions. I will also drop my email address in the chat. If you have any follow-up, you're certainly welcome to always reach out to me. And I think with that, uh, Commissioner McKinnon, I'll turn it back to you just for a few final closing thoughts here. Thanks again, uh, Alicia. Thank you, uh, Angelina, uh, as well. And again, thanks to the media uh, who participated this morning. Uh, it is good to see the unemployment rate uh, down for March. Uh, some good news with wage uh, growth as well. Um, and even with a little bit of disconnect with the data that was uh, released today, the overall trends will become clearer uh, over time. Uh, our April uh, employment uh, numbers uh, press conference will take place on Friday, uh, May 19th. Uh, so hopefully we uh, look forward to you all participating there. But again, a big thank you uh, to Angelina and the team, uh, and thank you to the media that attended today. Uh, hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye -bye.